everyone so in this video we are going to see the module six of transportation planning this is me dilruba km so let us overview the syllabus we have very little portion to cover in this module six that is land use transport models lorry derivative and quick response technique and some known transport solutions for transport problems so before moving to lorry derivative model we should know what is utpp which is urban transport planning package from all this transportation planning studies it was estimated that land use determine the transport demand and how this land use this simple phenomenon can be made use of building up the system of a transport planning is commonly known as urban transport planning package which is known as utpp and this basic requirement of this technique is land use activities for the year being studied then we will generate uh, the travel demand for forecasted years the main limitations are the travel demand estimated by this study tend to be very high in principal travel corridors where we have to provide highly costly rapid transit system in order to meet the travel demand forecasted by this method so it requires and it also requires a very complete specific land use allocation both at the production and at the attraction end of the trip so in order to overcome these two limitations a new land use models were generated and that is land use transport model so land use transport models use economic theories and simplified static method to explain and estimate the layout of urban land uses the land use model is quantitative method to predict future changes in land use socio economic and demographic data based on economic theories and social behavior the land use is not exogenously specified but it is determined by the model itself along with the transport demand so in this model we are going to estimate we are going to find out the land use as well as transport demand in the forecasted year simultaneously and the land use transport models are very sensitive to major development policy variables and thus it gives scope for manipulation in variety of ways so as to select the best alternative and there are many two types of land use transport model one is research model and another one is operational model so research models are based on the rich researches on this land use model land use studies and it is an excellent capability for sensitive forecasting and it requires extensive survey data but whereas operational model require only data collected routinely by planning department which routinely by planning department which uh, usually all the planning departments of the country used to have this so we can use operational model from the uh, data collected by planning department so let us see the selection criteria for land use transport models there are mainly six selection criteria before moving to uh, selecting a land use transport model first one should be simplicity so the model should have simple casual structure which should be easy to comprehend the second criteria is model data requirement so the data required must be modest and good models make use of data available with the planning department so if we need a very vast data uh, for that we have to do a lot of surveys then it will become uh, very tedious to do the model so uh, we always prefer to have modest data then the third criteria is adaptability the model should be adaptable to a given location and comprehensiveness the model should be comprehensive and should synthesize the relationship between activities that housing and transportation relationship between the activities of housing and transportation adequately well and the fifth criteria is operationality and rapidity the model should be operational capable of 
easy interpretation and should be able to test rapidly a wide range of policy options. And the last preference is computer cost. So, uh, in order to decide whether the model is expensive or cheap, the model should be operationally relate operational in relatively cheap computers, uh, operational systems, so that the model won't be that expensive. Now coming to our Lowry derivation model. This model is very simple, simple to use and it only requires modest data and it is comprehensive and economical and good response to change in input variables. And this model is used extensively and successfully in many studies and Lowry model relates mainly three principal components of urban areas. They are population, employment, and communication between the population and employment. So these are the three principal components of urban area that Lowry model relates. This is the structure of Lowry model. First exogenous allocation of basic employment, then employment to home allocation function, endogenous allocation of household, population serving employment allocation function, then endogenous allocation of population serving employment, and checking this constraints on population and serving service employment then we will find out the total employment vector which is relating to work home trip vector and household vector which relate to home service trip vector there are mainly three broad sectors of activity identified in a urban area in lowry derivative model they are employment in basic industries employment in service industries and household population sector. The first sector that is employment in basic industries is whose outputs and services are sold in market external to the region of study. And location of basic employment within a region is independent of the population and the service employment distrib distribution of that area. Example of this kind of employment are manufacturing industries, national financial institutions, and universities. Next sector is employment in service industry. Category of employment which serves the population in the region is coming under the sector and location of the service employment depends upon the population distribution of the area. Examples are distributions and retail trade, utilities, personal services, elementary and high schools. And third sector is our household population sector which consists of resident population. The saving features of Lowry derivation model. In Lowry derivation model, it assumes an economic base mechanism where employment is divided into basic and non-basic sectors. Basic employment is defined as that employment which is associated with industries whose products are largely used outside the region, whereas the products of the service employments are consumed within the region and it is assumed that the location of the basic industry is independent of the location of residential areas and service centers. Population is allocated in proportion to the population potential of each zone and service employment in proportion to the market potential of each zone. The fourth feature is the model ensures that population located in any zones does not violate a maximum density or holding capacity constraint is placed on each category of the service employment. And Lowry model relates population and employment at one particular time horizon. So these are the salient features of Lowry derivation model. Now moving to the next technique that is quick response technique. This is mainly suitable for medium-sized cities in developing countries. So quick response transport planning techniques are those depending upon the barest minimum of data and a simplified approach to estimate travel demand. For example, travel demand is carried out at an aggregated level and a traffic zone is considered the basic unit of estimation uh, which can be achieved by household survey which can yield the trip generation ratio. If such studies are carried out in selected cities of a country like India, 
we can transfer and dependable values per capita drip generation rate can be established. So this is how uh, we do quick response model. First, we will uh, study the traffic zone is considered as the basic unit of estimation. Based on that, we will develop traffic generation ratio from household surveys conducted on the study area. Then from that, we have to develop per capita drip generation rate for the city under the study. And this gives can be broken into home based work trips, home based non work trips, and non home based trips. And given population for the horizon year, these trip generation rate will then yield the number of various types of trips from each zone. And the trip distribution can be achieved by gravity model using simplified friction factor. And the trips are assigned to the network and adequacy is studied. So this is how we do the quick response technique. Standing features of quick response technique. The whole procedure can be handled manually without use of computer and is very simple and relatively low cost. There is a vast scope of developing for the developing and standardizing the technique for adoption in India like countries. Now moving to the last topic that is known transport solution for transport problem. Current transportation system and land use pattern tend to be relatively automobile dependent. It means that they provide a relatively high level of service to motorists but inferior access to other modes. Other modes of transport like public transit or bicycles and walking. Since physically, economically and socially disadvantaged people tend to have limited ability to drive, automobile dependency tends to make them even worse off. So planning reforms that create more balanced multimodal transportation system and more accessible land use patterns tend to support social equity objectives such as helping the poor access education and employment opportunities and helping disabled people access medical services and social access. So many of these reforms are incremental and their equity impact may appear small but the cumulative effect of a well-planned package of reforms that improve travel options and reduce automobile dependency can substantially increase social equity. And uh, when we say a best transportation plan city, we can say most of the people should use public transport or should depend on the public tra transport rather than their personalized vehicles like motorized cars so that which will reduce the congestion on the street and which will reduce the wastage of time which ultimately caused our economy depreciation. So that was our main objective that is to make the people to use public transit over their own personalized cars. So let us see some solutions that we can put forth for these kind of transport problems. First one is development of additional road capacity. If we provide additional road capacity which reduce the congestion, it's helping transportation problem that is we can reduce congestion but this one is very expensive method and in all the areas where road capacity is increased, it, has, it was seen that more number of motorists are using or uh, the people will have a tendency to use their personal vehicles on the roads if the capacity is very high. So we cannot say it's a very uh, suitable solution for transportation problem. But when you look at, at the first sight, it looks like a solution. Then let us see what are the different type of solutions which suits more for transportation problems. So second one is traffic management measures. Temporary and partial relief from road traffic congestion may be gained from introduction of traffic management schemes, which includes rearranging of traffic flows and directions or making some street one way without any major structural alteration to the existing 
street patterns. And recent experiments using information technology have been based upon intelligent vehicle highway system with the computerized control of the traffic light and entrances to freeways advised drivers of alternative routes to avoid congestion and information on weather and general road condition also help in reduction in congestion on the street so traffic management measures can help reduce congestion on the street next one is effective use of bus service we know we have to make we have to encourage the bus service since it is a public transport transport services so there are many ways to effectively introduce the bus services one way is by providing bus only lanes usually bus only lanes are provided with or against the direction of the traffic flow and are designated in heavily congested roads to achieve time saving although such savings may later be dissipated when buses enter inner city areas where priority lines at intersections and certain street may be restricted to buses only particularly in pedestrians pedestrianized shopping zones for entirely new towns of planning there is an opportunity to incorporate separate bus networks within the urban road system enabling buses to operate free from congestion so uh, this method is suitable more for newly forming towns or newly planning cities if a city is already existing and it's very difficult to provide a bus only lane or introducing a lane exclusively for bus and next one is parking restriction so banning all the parking by commuters or making it prohibitively expensive is one way to reduce the congestion on the street we can uh, if we plan the of if we ban the parking on street uh, it may affect the res local residents so separate arrangements should be made for local residents perhaps through permits or by reserving parking for them and city authorities can thus control public car parking places next one is promoting the bicycle we know bicycles are of great benefits uh, not only for our health but also but also for our environment being noiseless non polluting and less energy and space usage this non threatening to most other road users by comparing to other motor vehicles so this is a very good mode of transport and all all of the above we can say it is more healthy for the people so we must promote the bicycle by providing them separate parking facility and providing bicycle lanes on the sides of the street and the last one is encourage walking walking is the most important mode of transport in city cities yet frequent data on it are not collected and many planners do not think of it as a form of transport as a result of this neglect facilities provided specially for walking are often either absent or badly maintained so we have to provide good facilities for encouraging walking on sides of the street um, as food cities tend to be a pleasurable places in which to live with access to facilities within walking distance frequently cited as a key indicator of neighborhood quality of life so that is all about this module 6 thank you